Today we're just all about the background images, so let's jump to it. Okay, so uh, I've changed things up a little bit from the last video, but more or less we're where we were. I have a box there with a paragraph in it and a pink background. Well, let's say I want to put a picture behind there instead of having that ugly pink background. What a lot of people will try and do, and it sort of makes sense, uh, we know how to put in images. So we do an IMG SRC for the image source. Uh, alt, I'm just going to do my alt tag and close that off. My alt is a cute hamster. And we're going to use the same little hamster as last time. So that was in my images folder, and it was hamster.jpg. And we'll save that and refresh and there's my cute little hamster but i don't want him here i want him as the background for this whole div hmm how can i do that well i can't put him in the html this is the content of my page and this paragraph is here and my image is after it and that's just how it's going to work so i'm actually going to delete him from here save that so we'll refresh and he should disappear and i have to go over to my css so just like I can put a background color of pink, I can also put in a background image. So what I want to do is we can get rid of all that and come in with background image. And if you're using a code editor like Adam and it's auto filling, uh, you see image at the top and you might be inclined to grab that one, but we actually want to grab URL, which is the address of the image. So you could put in an absolute path here and have it link off to an image somewhere else on the internet, but I would recommend you have it in your root folder like my hamster is. Uh, and what you might do is do IMG, because that's where my hamster image is. It's in my image folder and write in hamster.jpg. Problem is it doesn't work. And the reason it's not working is this is a relative link but I'm inside my CSS folder right now. So I'm in here, uh, I'm in this file, and then it's looking for IMG and it can't find it. And so it just doesn't load it. There's no broken image or anything like that. When it's a background image, if it's not working, it just doesn't have a background. So what we need it to do now is we need it to go from here, back one step into this stage and then into my image folder. And to do that, we use two dots. So two dots forward slash, this means go backwards, then find my image folder, and then find hamster.jpg inside my image folder. Let's save that, hit refresh, and there he is. Awesome. Well, sort of awesome. You'll notice there's a few weird things going on. First of all, the image is repeating itself here. So I have my hamster, and then it's, you know, the picture's starting itself over again. And I don't see all of my hamster. What's going on? Well, pretty much just like I had before with a background of pink, the box was getting bigger and smaller according to the content. So when I'm changing my background image, it's the same as changing the background color. The browser is not really paying attention to the picture, just like, you know, it wasn't paying attention to the color. It's just filling the background with that picture. However big the box is, is however big the box is. So uh, I mentioned in the CSS box model video that if I want more background, I can add more padding. Uh, in this case, let's do 200 top and bottom, but keep 100 pixels on the left and right. So if I save that, well, I start seeing more of my hamster and well, now I have too much of my hamster again. This background is repeating all over the place. So I do have a few options here. Uh, I do have a background repeat option. And with the background repeat, we do get some options. I get no repeat, which sort of does what it you'd expect to do, it stops it from repeating itself. We have uh, repeat. We have repeat x. So it's repeating only on the x axis, so only across this way, or we have repeat y. Whoops, that should be lowercase, save. And now it's only repeating up and down. With some images, the repeat x and repeat y are what you want and it will work well because you want a repeating pattern across the top. There's lots of good websites out there that have um, background patterns that you can use that are meant to be repeated and they repeat themselves all over the place. In fact, why don't we go get one of those right now? Subtle Patterns is a very nice site. I highly recommend it. I'm going to put a link down in the description below if you're looking for it. And I'm going to find 
something that works for my site. Uh, this has sort of the same color. Why don't we try that one out? So I'm going to hit download. It gives me a zip file. I want to take open up there. It usually gives us a PNG. So I'm going to grab that and just drag it off into my image folder. And so I have that file in there. So why don't we come up and put that on our body? Uh, so instead of having a background color, or I can keep that and I can do background image. Remember it's URL. So I want to go backwards a step. I want to go into my image folder. And I think it was weather.png. I'll save that and hit refresh. And there we go. It works. I can see those repeating pattern and it's a it's a pattern that's meant to be repeated, so I shouldn't get any awkward lines like this. It should just be this nice background image that's filling up the whole page. Now I've kept my background color and my background image. By doing this, as I saw before, if my background image doesn't load, it just pretends it wasn't there. If I have a background color, it will fall back to that background color. And because these are super similar to each other, it's a pretty nice fallback. So there's no problem uh, in having a color and an image, uh, and it might actually be a good thing just in case the image doesn't load for one reason or another. But with this hamster, uh, this whole repeating background pattern thing isn't working, and the background repeat none isn't really working either. It's cutting off, you know, it's, it's just not looking so good. Uh, so we have a few other options. So let's come in with background and you'll also notice we have a few things here. Uh, one of them is background size. And for this video, it's the last one we're going to look at. Auto is the default. So it's one of the options we have. Contain is another one. So let's try out contain and save it. Contains a bit of a weird one. Um, it's going to fill the whole space up. So it's going to, it will stretch your image in proportion, so it won't make your image flat or fat or anything like that. It's going to keep it in proportion, but it will, um, it's going to make sure I see the entire image. So it's, I see my whole picture. It's going to make the whole picture fit one time on there, but if there is any empty space, it will keep repeating it. The other one that's in there is cover. And if I use cover, I will lose a little bit of my image. And on this one, we don't actually notice it right now. I'm going to change things up so we do. Cover, personally, I love uh, for when you have pictures like this that you want as a background. And the reason the cover works so well is it's going to cover the entire div or whatever you're putting a background image on with your picture. And it's going to make sure that the image is growing or shrinking proportionally. And it's not going to repeat itself because it's just going to use that one image without repeating to fill up the whole space. This can get a little weird though. Let's just say I make my padding top and bottom 800 pixels, which hopefully isn't a realistic scenario. Oh, that was left and right, uh, but that's okay. You'll see now I'm losing the bottom of my picture and he's becoming a little bit blurry. My image wasn't this big. It's making the image much bigger than it used to be. So it is losing some quality. I'm also losing the bottom of my picture a little bit. And let's bring this back down to 100 and make this one 800. And you'll also see, now I'm really losing my picture. Uh, my hamster's all the way off here. So I'm losing quality and I'm losing a lot of my picture. So remember, it's just like having a background color. The browser doesn't really care. It just wants to make sure that this picture is fitting inside this space. And I said background size would be the last thing we'd look at, but the last one we actually will look at is background position. We get some different options here and the default is top left. So right now this is the top left of my picture and it's making sure that the top left actually aligns there. Let's just change that over to center and hit refresh. And now I actually see my hamster and there he is. And what it's doing is it's putting the center of the image in the center of the div. So the position, background position is center, and it's center, the perfect middle of the picture is in the perfect middle of the div. I could also say bottom and save, and now our bottom, let's try right bottom, refresh, and where did he go? Well, he's gone, and now I actually see the right side of my uh, picture instead. Um, so we can play with the background position, whoops, background position a little bit. Um, if you're missing part of your picture and you want to sort of realign it a little bit. 
So you can choose, you know, I need to see the more of the top, the bottom, the left, the right, or I just need to perfectly center my picture in there. And um, yeah, that's it. Background position, or background position, background images are fairly easy to use. Sometimes you run into some weird things like the repeating pattern that we just saw. And again, the background size cover is a nice cure-all for that. If not, you get a nice repeating hamster over and over and over again. And always remember, if you're using background pictures, padding gives you more background. The more padding you have, the more background you have. It's one of the problems I often see people uh, running into is they want a nice, beautiful background image, but it's they don't have enough of it. And they, you know, I need more picture on the top, I'll add more padding on the top. I need more picture on the bottom, I add more padding on the bottom. And remember, if you want text on top of an image, it has to be a background image. That's it for background images. This actually went on a little bit longer than I thought it would, but we covered a lot in there. Hope you learned something from it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Make sure you leave a comment down below to say hi if nothing else, and see you guys next time.